So good afternoon, I think we are now, or nearly there. Um, and um, thanks very much for, for having us. So yes, uh, my name's Andrew Knight, I'm from Outdoors Victoria, uh, and um, great to connect with you today. You may not have heard of Outdoors Victoria because we're only um, 12, 13 years old. Um, we've come out of um, an organisation that some of you might know of, um, Victorian Outdoor Education Association, so the um, Professional Teachers Association for Outdoor Environmental Studies teachers, um, and that um, combined with the Outdoor Recreation Centre to become Outdoors Victoria um, back in 2012. Now, um, we have most certainly already acknowledged um, the traditional owners and the, the, the land that we're on, but um, definitely wanted to reiterate um, our thanks, appreciation and respect for traditional owners um, across the Kulin Nations. Um, it's incredibly important that um, all of us in the outdoors sector, um, both in outdoor education and outdoor recreation, acknowledge the, um, the ongoing contribution um, to culture, land management, um, of uh, Indigenous Australians, past, present and emerging. So um, Outdoors Victoria, through its um, support and advocacy of the thousands of professionals and volunteers in the outdoor workforce sector, works to get more Victorians active in nature. So we're the um, recognised umbrella peak body across outdoor education and um, outdoor recreation focused on human powered, not combustion engine powered, outdoor activities. So uh, we're um, very much in the space of um, sustainable, uh, respectful, um, both to the environment and to um, Indigenous Australians um, as to um, the activities that we're uh, focused on. Now, whether that be across school camps uh, and there's um, about 6,000 um, professionals today that are working in 190 school camps across Victoria, whether it be in um, expeditions, um, and there's a couple of thousand wonderful professionals in that space as well, um, taking young and not so young, but young at heart Victorians across Victoria um, on the canvas today and tonight. Uh, and um, we also represent um, the outdoor education teachers um, across 300 um, high schools in Victoria and um, uh, a member of the um, Council of Practicing Teachers Association of Victoria. Okay, so the, the final piece on us, so you understand a little bit about what we can add and, and maybe why you haven't heard of much of us before because we're not a public facing organisation particularly, um, is that um, our three objectives around supporting a thriving outdoor sector advocating for every Victorian to be more active in the outdoors, um, which is very important because um, uh, with all those thousands of outdoor professionals out there, they're then facilitating um, hundreds of thousands of Victorians getting active in the outdoors. Um, so from a, from a government standpoint, it's very important that we um, exist to be able to support all those outdoor professionals, um, provide um, physical literacies around um, climbing, mountain biking, hiking, setting up tents, paddling, etc., cetera, um, to then be able to have a, a lifelong um, love affair with getting active outdoors. Um, and also building a strong and sustainable outdoors peak body to best support our community. And that's why we can be here today because of um, Victorian government support um, and the support of um, our affiliate supporters. Okay, so, um, as Matt said, we'll touch on um, some of these um, values and, the, and, and hopefully you get to understand and, and to some extent agree with um, our standpoint here, is that um, there very much are um, a number of benefits um, of um, having the outdoor sector um, facilitate Victorians getting um, out and into nature. Um, from an economic perspective, I'll give you a couple of more stats in a minute. Um, thanks, Matt, for the wonderful introduction, though. Uh, and then also, um, we've seen and we've done some, some research that we'll provide to, to everyone over time, um, which is about to be released by the academics, around um, 
we were uh, part of a project um, with uh, James Molino at the time, the Deputy Premier, as well as Premier Dan Andrews, around um, getting uh, 107,000 disadvantaged um, students active after COVID um, and getting into the outdoors uh, on camp. Many of those schools and those parents uh, and their kids, of course, couldn't, couldn't afford it. Um, so the government um, invested $84 million in getting um, those students active outdoors and some of the, um, the findings out of um, what really did happen after we had you know, the very compulsory lockdowns um, was then the, the struggles of young people to um, um, actually get um, active back in society and definitely back active out in nature. Um, so that was a, a fantastic um, piece that we can provide some information on down the track that's definitely a, a very tremendously strong argument that we need to um, continue to get um, our community active outdoors. Of course, in a, in a safe way and in an environmentally sustainable and culturally safe way as too. Um, and um, it really leads into number three, um, which is what all of us really know here, um, but it's, it's definitely um, the discovery well and surely that if, if we don't have um, a level of access to, um, to public land um, in a sustainable, safe way, uh, then we're going to end up um, with decision makers down the track that don't have the connection to nature that all of us online and all of us here have. Um, and there's a number of key decision makers in the room and online today. Um, we need to make sure that your next generation and generation after that um, that come through that are ministers, heads of department, um, heads of VAC, etc., are um, entirely um, exposed from a very young age um, um, into nature um, and, and understand um, how to interact with nature and work with nature for its conservation um, for eternity. So just a couple of stats there. Um, these come from the Marsden Jacob report of 2016. Um, we were going to uh, do a refresh um, in the early 2020s, but something else came up. Um, so um, we're uh, in the process now of chatting to a number of different um, departments, researchers about what, uh, what we can do there. Um, but that's on our website as well. Um, so if you go into the, uh, the um, resources and research section, you can have a look at that particular report that was um, uh, uh, paid for by Sport and Recreation Victoria. Um, so some pretty powerful stats. Um, around um, the, the contribution um, to uh, nature-based outdoor activities in Victoria. Uh, and if you think of these are stats from research that was done in 2014 and a little bit into 2015. So if you fast track that, you can add um, another 20 or 30% to a number of those figures. Um, and I think around that 265 million avoided costs to the Victorian healthcare system at the rate we're going, when you look at um, how many hospital beds we're um, continuing to build in our public and private hospitals, we will end up gobbling up the entire Victorian state budget if we keep heading in that direction. So I think from a from a uh, avoided health costs perspective, don't know if you've wanted to build anything recently, but it costs about double what it did about five years ago. Um, I think you'd be looking at nudging probably the billion dollars in, in preventative health outcomes um, out of getting Victorians active in nature. Um, and that last stat's really about objective, you know, number three we were talking about before, where we just need to continue to expose our young people um, to nature. Um, and we've got a tremendous opportunity across our networks to be able to um, pass on learnings and experiences from all of you and the people online um, um, to 100, you know, hundreds of thousands of children each year that um, go through our um, school camps. So I think that's something that I'd love to explore with a number of decision makers in the room down the track as to what we can come up with um, to, to really, um, we've got um, open minds on camp, ready to learn, um, and what are the next steps, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have a great opportunity to, to pass on some pretty straightforward knowledge to, 
to um, those children uh, at the very right age. Okay, so um, I'm going to get us back a bit of time today um, and maybe for the panel session too. So look forward to um, chatting to you later on and um, hopefully this has been a good introduction to Outdoors Victoria. Um, we look forward to contributing to this conversation for, for many years to come. Thank you.